Good morning, everybody. Buenos dias. Thank you, Katrin, for presenting this wonderful initiative. I think it's important to have, to have something beyond the own university, which can help us to drive our own sustainability efforts. Um, I'm the academic director of DIM, the Master in Strategy and International Management at the University of St. Gallen, which we first started presenting 10 years ago. And last year, I remember very well, we did our double degree, the closing of the contract with Arturo in Costa Rica at the INCAI. And I was not only impressed by the INCAI, I was also very much impressed by the whole country. Um, because the whole country is moving very much forward to drive uh, some kind of sustainability agenda. No wonder with such a beautiful nature and ecosystem you have in your country. Congratulations. So I'm looking very much forward to enrich our master and double degree. Our mission of the SIM has always been, I quote, to provide our students with the necessary knowledge in the field of general management for a successful career as respected and responsible managers, business consultants or entrepreneurs. We had to prepare our students for a world which is becoming increasingly complex. In this world, our students will have to balance and integrate multiple network relationships and multiple objectives. This begs the question, how we can help them improve their collaborative capabilities, linking to what Katrin said, in order to be respected and responsible leaders, like we claimed it in our mission. To answer this question, I will first review our thinking and subsequently tell you how we implemented it, how we tried to walk our talk. The way we frame the world around us is focused on actors, individuals, leaders and institutional actors like corporations. However, standalone actors are lost, powerless, autistic people whose impact and purpose can only be sustainable if they are embedded in well-functioning relationships. And it is the quality of these relationships that will determine our actors' success and performance. We thus assume that organizations' sustainable development is always based on healthy and fair relationships with our most relevant stakeholders. They matter for value creation, they matter for performance. There is already a powerful approach which sees corporate life through a relational lens, stakeholder management, a term that Freeman coined in the 80s. We have learned the hard way that a focus only on the shareholder relations is not sufficient. In order for us to consider sustainable development, we have to add our relationship with society and environment to that with shareholders. Currently, new European law also expects triple bottom line reporting from larger corporations to show how much value they have created for these three stakeholders. This should be fine, shouldn't it? Profit with a purpose. But can we stop here? Will this be the proof of the pudding? I'm skeptical. If we were to follow the above approach, we would be norming, we would standardizing the selection of three stakeholders, society, shareholder, and environment. As a strategist, I know that success comes from uniqueness. By doing what everybody is doing or has to do, we are just on par with the others. But I believe that consciously selecting your most relevant stakeholders is already a source of uniqueness. So doing, why not give, for example, the next generation as a stakeholder a special role? This stakeholder has almost no power over you at the moment as a company. Consequently, there is no direct need to give them influence. But you can take specific responsibility to the next generation by selecting the stakeholder. This gives your strategic positioning a unique profile. However, adding an increasing number of stakeholders leads to greater complexity in decision-making. 
This is exactly the situation our students will face in their future leadership positions. In the past, maximizing shareholder value was easy because it follows a clear mathematical formula. But, as Freeman once said, a stakeholder approach rejects the very idea of maximizing a single objective. Rather, stakeholder management is a never-ending task of balancing and integrating multiple relationships and multiple objectives. But how can we then fulfill the task of balancing and integrating? And how can we distribute the value created fairly to our stakeholders? First of all, there is no mathematical algorithm to help us. We therefore have to look for something else. At this point, I want to introduce a construct that we call Augenmaß in German. Unfortunately, there is no direct translation into English, but it means to act with a sense of proportion, with sound judgment after careful consideration. I'm convinced that our students can enhance the Augenmaß or the people's sense of proportion. We can learn to develop healthy and balanced stakeholder relationships. This usually starts by simply listening very careful to, asser to ascertain the actual situation from the stakeholder's perspective. The next point is to manage a constructive dialogue. But the biggest challenge, from my point of view, lies in distributing value from the organization to the stakeholders, and this requires what I mentioned, Augenmaß. Many are still stuck in a trade-off thinking of a kind, the more I give the one, the less the others can have. The unspoken assumption here is that the size of the value creation cake is fixed. However, we have to take a collaborative network view and focus on the mutuality of the stakeholder interest. The source of new value generation lies in this mutuality. From a network view, value creation based on mutuality is more valuable than merely satisfying self-interest in an unrelenting struggle for more individual profit. This contributes to the overall value creation, to the enlarging of the cake without resorting to trade-offs. As promised, I can now start explaining how we implemented these conceptual thoughts in our SIM program. Our assumption was that providing students with a strong knowledge base might be not sufficient. We believed uh, they also have to improve their real-life experience. We thus sub subsequently developed the Simagination Challenge. This is a masterclass offered by Omi Dashari, the managing director of the SIM program. Students are required to plan, execute and reflect upon a challenging project which aims at leaving a positive and sustainable impact on society. Our st students work here on social projects all over the world, applying the knowledge they gained in their lectures, but which is now combined with their emotional experience. On the spot, they get the chance to understand the network of relationships in which their project is embedded. They have to educate the people with whom they are working to build healthy relationships in order to improve the situation. But more challenging, they have to convince these people that the cake will only grow if there is mutuality and not trade-off thinking. If the cake grows, everybody grows. I will next show you a short cut from a video uh, we took. Imagination um, is about transformation, it's about personal mastery. It is about an attitude of service and cultivating that attitude of service by collaborating together. Obviously the whole SIM program defines who we are. This Imagination Challenge is a very important component of this to identify how we build character as a community and individually as well. We can show as a community, this is us. This is us giving back to society.
it was really amazing to see how this complex idea to supply a community in a, in a region in need with water, with clean water, really breaks down into small little steps and then everything comes together at the end and then you can really see that your hard work of fundraising and planning and everything paid off. Within the project you help really help advance certain community in a developing world and we see now the results which are there which really see that the people are being helped and they are they learn something from us and we learn something from them. I think it's a learning about both the business side and the social side. I think it was definitely very important that the entrepreneurial part as in starting from scratch. There's so many different skills you need, there's so many different angles you can help. It's not just about running the project as an op operationally. Imagination has really changed the way I do things, the way I think about things and also the goals I have in life. The only time I have really felt completely in balance and happy has been during my, my time in Lima and I need that in my job. I, I cannot imagine now to ever pull out of the project because um, we all really stand behind and we believe in the idea. I will continue it and uh, I will obviously keep in touch um, with the next pieces generations. So I would never try to cut this part of my life because it's just, uh, it has just become such an important thing to me and also to the other group members. I'm definitely going to continue for even longer and not only as a manager but try and build the project even further. Seeing how grateful people So I hope the movie gives you also a little bit an emotional impression uh, about what the students uh, reflect after they did their, their project work. And many are coming home and saying uh, it was a life-changing experience uh, for them. Besides this imagination challenge, uh, I mentioned further, we introduced last year the new SIM course, Sustainability as Strategic Opportunity led by Barbara Cooks. She is a very, very experienced senior manager. Uh, she was responsible in the board of Siemens, for, of Siemens for sustainability. And Florian Überbacher, he's an assistant professor at my institute. The course is a think tank and has the objective to help SIM students to tackle in close cooperation with well-known companies, sustainability issues, not only in theoretical, but especially in practical hands-on ways. For example, one of the participating company is a globally leading company in the flavors and fragrances industry. You can see it, it's Firmenich, 
and I think they are also active uh, in Latin America, in Brazil, I've seen them. The company proposed some very specific projects, like this one, how to design and, lever and, and leverage a sustainable sourcing program. The students did amazing work, and the owners of the company were very impressed uh, how much they were able to deliver in a short time. To sum up, in a world of increasingly complex stakeholder networks, decision makers should strive for solutions that build social capital through trust-based relationships. It requires a fundamental shift from a firm-centric view of managing dyadic stakeholder relationships to a collaborative mindset of engaging with stakeholders to build reciprocal, mutually defined relationships. These relationships are about linking different stakeholder interests to amplify their impact on the overall value creation and distribution in the collaboration network. It is about shifting from controlling self-interest to mutuality. This can lead to new opportunities to enlarging the pie, the cake. But distributional justice is dependent on the quality of our organ mass, our sense of proportion. And the good news is, our organ mass can be improved by taking consciously a relational lens on organizations. Thus, we hope to help a bit to push the global sustainability agenda forward. Thank you.